You're listening to Creep Geeks Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek. So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creepy Geeks Podcast, episode number 156. Top nine paranormal news and events of 2019. Number seven, naked devil woman attacks family. Yeah. So here we are again. Welcome back to the Creep Geeks Podcast. This is our top nine paranormal news and events of 2019, number seven. Yeah. Just in case you didn't hear that the first time. <laughs> yeah. So we decided to go ahead and do this short podcast for the holiday season because a lot of people decide to take breaks over the holidays. And then what are you supposed to do for podcasts? Listen to reruns? Yeah. What no. about the rest of y'all? That's right. Yeah. So unlike everybody else who's taking breaks, we decided not to. We decided to put out these little mini episodes to kind of let you know, hey, we're with you, man. Yeah. Whether yeah. you're, you know, working graveyard or you have the type of job where you kind of have to be at work or yeah. if you're hanging out with family in the holidays. And, and you don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. You can just kind of like dash off somewhere and listen to the old podcast. So anyway, what we decided to do is kind of come up with a, a top nine paranormal news and events of 2019. And these are the things that we've seen and we've talked about in the past in our previous episodes. These are the ones that got attention. A lot of attention. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't like make these up or anything. And just so you know, these are out of order. So our number seven doesn't necessarily mean this is the third from the top kind of a thing. It's just it is what it is. It got okay. traction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if this is your very first time tuning into the podcast, we very much appreciate having you here. And if you're a long time listener or just a, a repeat listener, also very much appreciate having you here. We're getting closer to the holidays and we're counting down our top nine and we're at number seven. Yep. We're just rolling along like a freight train. So get some admin out of the way. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can definitely contact us. We have a way for you to get a hold of us. And if you have to uh, share a story or if you do something like that, we have the means for that to happen. We have a phone number. That phone number is 575-208-4025. So if you think of something, you're like, man, I have to share that. Call the number. Leave us a message. Yes. So. And not just a message saying, hey, call me back. <laughs> yeah. Hey, call me back. Because we're not doing that. <laughs> like, no. Tell Let us, us know what you on. got. Give yeah. us an idea. You know, because we do uh, live out in the woods. We actually broadcast our paranormal and fun stories from an underground bunker, from an undisclosed location in Western North Carolina. We literally have no cell phone service at all. Yeah. That's no joke. We have to get in the car and drive like seven miles to return your call that says, hey, call me back. So it's a thing. And then we find out you're just We're not complaining. sell us business cards. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've complained about on a podcast like four different times. I know. So, anyway, it's called due diligence. We do it. Yeah. It's all right. Alternately, you can always email us or check our website and use the contact us form. Our email address is contact at creepgeeks.com. Yes. You can actually go to our website, creepgeeks.com and click the contact form there and fill it out. Yep. You can join us on our Facebook group and interact with other like-minded people who like to share funny stuff typically. And our Facebook call, our group is called, uh, what? Creep Geeks Facebook. What? Group. <laughs> yes. And we also have a, a Facebook page. Creep Geeks Podcast. Yes. And that's about it. We also have a Twitter. Oh, yeah. And Instagram. Instagram. Um, Tumblr. A Tumblr. Kind of a YouTube a, channel. Yep. Slightly Fa neglected. Facebook page. We've already said that. Slightly neglected Reddit. Yep. So, yeah. Oh. Yes. Lots of different ways for you to contact us and interact with us. And for that, we, uh, we appreciate those who 
take the time or make the effort. Yeah. It's very nice. So anyway, there you go. Oh, if you're listening to us uh, on your uh, podcast player of choice and you have the opportunity or the ability to leave a uh, comment or a rating and you do that, that's great. Thank you. We appreciate that. When you leave a rating or a review for a smaller podcast, it increases that podcast visibility, which helps it grow. Yes. And if you'd like to uh, support us when you're doing your Amazon shopping, because you're an Amazon Prime member like we all are, and you buy something and you use our affiliate link, we get a small percentage. And we take that small percentage and we put it towards getting gas for our albino rhino, our venture camper mobile investigation machine. Of destruction. Of destruction. <laughs> and coffee and treats for the puppy dog. Yes, Pepper. So every time you uh, use the Amazon link and buy something, Pepper gets some duck jerky treats. Because yes. that's what she likes. Because she's fancy. Yeah. <laughs> I have sampled the duck jerky treats, and I don't particularly care for them. It's just me. Anyways, the affiliate so. link is going to be Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash cheap geek and we'll also put that link in the show notes for this podcast episode yes because everything we talk about in the podcast if there's a link you can click it yep yep okay so kind of moving right into this our abbreviated episodes of the podcast this story kind of hit home because it was close to where we're from yeah originally in virginia yes and plus with a with an article title like this, it's like I had to click it. <laughs> Virginia dad fires 39 shots at naked devil who broke into the family's new home. Yeah. So I was like, what? Clicking away, right? Like turbo clicking, trying to get to it. And it's a pretty weird story. It happened in Chesterfield. so Close enough, man. Yeah. No, I mean, that's kind of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just so you know, because we're not like putting on airs or anything. We're actually originally from Virginia Beach. I'm from Chesapeake. That's what you say, but you grew up in Virginia <laughs> Beach. You're like, ooh, I'm from Chesapeake. That doesn't score you any additional points. Yes, it does. No. You know what Chesapeake is? What? Rural Virginia Beach. Uh-uh. Yes, it is. Chesapeake's garbage. My parents' house was off Cedar Road. Oh, look at now you're showing fancy. off. <laughs> yeah, no. Anyway, it doesn't really matter where you're from in Virginia. You know, so. But... Chesterfield. Virginia Chester. dad fires 39 shots at Naked Devil. <laughs> so the original headlines for this uh, really. See, you just, just uh, you got to tell the story first before you start talking about. They were shocking. The original title. I mean, we it was a shocking title, but the story is even more ridiculous. Okay. So go ahead. Well, no, because the original headlines were like. Blue-haired, black-eyed devil attacks family. Well, that was some embellishments, but yeah, yeah the original, yeah, it was. No, the original was Crazy Naked Devil Woman. With black eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy black eyes. So anyway, it's been sort of changed since then because this came out around the 4th of July weekend, right? Yeah. And this family bought a house and they moved in, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And so while the fireworks were going and people out there trying to do their stuff, this naked lady invaded the family's newly bought home. Yeah. And according to the people that are living in the home, she didn't leave. And the reason why we know that she is a crazy naked devil lady is because she said, I'm the devil. Yeah. So after she's told them that she was the devil, she was met with 39 warning shots by the (laughs) father of the family. (laughs) Okay. So, I mean, the way the original title went and the original story went, it was they were making it out to be like he just could not kill this woman and shot like 39 times at her. Yeah. Now, later on, he was like, he was just firing warning shots. So I'm wondering how many of those warning shots were him just not doing what he needed to do or just being freaked out or whatever. Maybe he really was shooting warning shots. And see, shots. that's the thing. I went to um, the article source in this one and found some of the original photos and it's like these weird shots into the wall. The wall. Yeah, on a, like a stairway wall. Yeah. And they're kind of small. Yeah. Well, they don't they never or really say what kind of weapon it is. Are those like crazy well, screwdriver uh, stabs or something? Here's you know? the thing. Yeah. Um 
a lot of what you see on television when somebody shoots something is there for dramatic effect. Because if you really shot like a nine millimeter into some drywall, it's not going to like blow the house up. Oh. It's not going to leave this big crater as whole. It's going to leave a hole about the size of a nine millimeter slug. Okay. Or round, if you will. It's not very big. So you figure, you know, a little bit larger than the head of a pencil eraser hole in the wall. And it's not like kind of just, you know, well, a lot crack of it or whatever. It's, I mean, so, yeah. So, the sh- and they never really say what it is, but it's obviously a small caliber weapon. Now, if it's something like a forty five where the round tumbles as it goes through the air, yeah. it, it creates a bigger impact, bigger hole. So, um, so anyway, this person broke in, this crazy naked of a lady <laughs> who said that I'm the devil <sighs> and he shot, the dad shot 39 times at her, right? They had warning shots and quotes in the air, that kind of thing. Yeah. So reportedly a heated comfort, a confrontation ensued between the naked devil and the whole family. Oh. So they're like, according to reports, furniture was thrown. Oh, right, yeah. their 12-year-old joined in on the action, tagging himself on, you know, basically tagging himself in on what many would consider to be like a WWE main event. <sighs> and 12-year-old's involvement uh, proved to be critical in the end as he managed to land a vital blow to the naked devil's neck using a wrench. They have, like, photos of that. Yeah. yeah. So, and it says, at the end of the bout, the father reported that the naked devil's strength was comparable to four men. The home invader and the father <laughs> were hospitalized as a result of the injuries. And they were non-threatening, right? Yeah. Uh, but according to the police reports, you know, they were both hospitalized and uh, for non-life-threatening injuries. Now, That's the true. naked devil's identity was kept confidential. Okay, so I have two different articles open. Okay, well, if you stop and let me, let me kind of roll into it, later on they have identified her. Mm-hmm. And I was going to say, as I got to it, as going into a physical description, this crazy strength of four men, naked devil lady, weighs like 110 pounds. She's not large at all. And the original report said she had severe head trauma and everything was life-threatening. Yeah, but so, now yeah. since then, evidently it's not. Yeah. But we all know the devil has super healing power, so maybe it has something to do with it, right? <laughs> So, here's where it gets a little weird. I mean, you know, it's weird enough having a crazy ne- naked devil lady play- breaking into your house saying, I'm the devil, and then you shoot at her 39 times, right? And what are the odds of, like, missing 39 times, even if you're trying to do warning shots? And then the kid takes her out. With a with a, you know, with a wrench to the neck. Yeah. So, as soon as this happened, right, a GoFundMe page was created to cover costs and expenses Of the damages that was incurred during the violent dispute. Yeah. And so they have like photos from the crime scene with like bullet river walls, red tinged floors because there's like blood everywhere. And so they moved into the house. This lady broke in, right? Yeah. All this damage was caused and immediately a GoFundMe page kind of pops up. Yeah. Hmm. Now, that didn't really sit well with a lot of people. A lot of people were like, what? Because it didn't, it just. It didn't, yeah. It's like, wow, that was pretty fast, you know. And the GoFundMe was like, first night in our beautiful home when an intruder decides to enter our home and takes, and tries to take our life one at a time. How do you know that? Yeah, and, you know, and. See, because part of me is like, okay, I can kind of see what, what they're kind of worried about. Yeah. Because there's a lot of cleanup that happens. There was a lot of damage. I mean, drywall has to be replaced. The you know, blood floors has to be cleaned out. All this crazy stuff has to happen. They just moved in. so they're It probably- was their first night in the house. So yeah. it makes me wonder, you know, they put the GoFundMe page up pretty quick. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, they're just trying to get money or whatever. But if you look at it from a couple of different aspects here, a lot of times you buy a house, right? You've gone, you've done the closing, you've signed in. Uh, you know, sign your life away, all the paperwork and stuff. It's time to move in. You get the keys. You've got things moved in. You're going to spend your first night. You don't typically, a lot of times, have money. Yeah. You've because officially you, become house yeah, rich. Yeah, you know, you've, you've gone through all that stuff where you've got, like, escrow, and you've got yeah. all the money and this stuff that you can't touch. And, 
you know, a lot of times you, you got to really control your spending so it doesn't change your mortgage application and paperwork and all this other stuff. So it's entirely possible, like you were saying, that they were house rich. Cash poor. But dirt broke cash poor. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, through this process, you have to get home. Well, you have to get homeowner's insurance normally to um, insure your loan as well. And it's your first night in, you know what I mean? So is it? <laughs> and many homeowner's insurance depending on what you get and when it starts, policy starts, it may only cover structural. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so you have to deal with all that. And then plus, you know, a lot of people think, oh, we got homeowner's insurance, there's no deductible. <laughs> uh, that's not true. So if you've got like a $5,000 deductible and you just moved in and you're kind of cash poor, but you're house rich now, I mean, you might have to come up with that $5,000 deductible. Yeah. Which they probably don't have. You know, and it is in Chesterfield, Virginia. They never really talk about you know, their finances and that kind of thing. But I mean, just, just to do a cursory glance at their pictures on the internet, they don't look super rich to me. No, they look normal people. Yeah. yeah. I think with all the worries and stuff and, and all the, the sort of aggravation that they knew was going to come from all of this, yeah. they tried to be proactive and throw a gun, go a fund me page up mm. just because if it hit the news, they were maybe hoping to cover some of their expenses. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It it didn't sit right with me. Yeah, because you're like, oh, you hear the story, and then it's like the next day, oh, hey, did you know they have a GoFundMe page? And you're like, well, okay. Yeah. If they're going to immediately throw up a GoFundMe page, you, you know, my first thought is, uh, this is orchestrated, this is fake, because we've been burned by that in the past, where good Samaritans do somebody a favor, and next thing you know, you find out that the people that set up a GoFundMe page for, like, the homeless fella. Yeah. Were really taking all the money, you know what I mean? So this person wasn't getting the money that they were supposed to get. Or worse, it's some sort of weird convoluted love triangle that ends yeah. up on Dateline or something, you or know? Or even worse, that all, they're all involved, yeah. you know, it's this thing. So people, I mean, a lot of guys fummies don't really uh, sort of come to fruition and people support them and they back them and then nothing happens. It makes you wary. I mean, originally you're like, honestly... I felt really bad for these people. Yeah, and some of the comments yeah. were like, 39 shots, was that in one bag? That's a few reloads. It, you know, at yeah. least one reload if it was bigger. Smells of fish. But like I, something stinks here, right? Yeah. I remember, like, the one article that had all the pictures, like, all of them. And it was like, you know, she ripped up the stairs. Like, she climbed up, but she clawed up. So there were scratches all over some furniture, the yeah. stairs. An entertainment center got destroyed in the process. It was like WWE. They were like throwing stuff around. Furniture's getting destroyed. (laughs) So it's kind of like. But then like you were saying, I mean, getting back to the devil lady, you know, the initial reports for me that threw me off was that she had severe head trauma. So I'm like, I want to know what she looks like. Yeah. But you couldn't because if somebody's got severe head trauma and they're in ICU, they're not going to release the offender's identity. Well, yeah, and plus until they're actually, you know, yeah. I mean, who know, who really knows anyway? Because even if they're arrested in the past, they can't just go flat yeah. showing a mugshot either. But but then, you know, there was some speculation that there was drugs involved, which is probably more than yeah. likely, and like super drugs and all this crazy stuff. So, but, but they haven't really said. And but when they did have the update, like what you were talking about, yeah, eight days later there was an update where they put this person's picture on the internet, mm. and it says. Police confirmed the identity of the woman as 29-year-old Ryan Doss, resident of North Chesterfield. Uh, Doss is charged with assault and battery, malicious wounding, and breaking and entering. This is not a large person. No. Got a little little purple ponytail on top, like a man bun kind of a thing going on. (laughs) Uh, Got a black eye, kind of knotted up a little bit, you know. Looks well, just, pretty good overall, but this is, of course, eight days later. But it's deceiving because, remember, it was black-eyed devil woman with blue hair attacks family. Yeah. I'm thinking black-eyed kids, you know? Yeah, like, no, this is like this, you know? this skinny chick with a shaved head with a little black ponytail eye. poof on top of a black <laughs> eye. Yeah, it looks like she could have been fighting in a parking lot somewhere, like after, you know, after a nightclub incident. And the coolest thing about it is she's wearing a Disney princess t-shirt. A lad, Princess Jasmine. Princess Jasmine. And she but this person like, does not and is not that large. Yeah. And she certainly, if it's only eight days later, not, you know, possibly dying from a serious head injury. And where is the neck injury? 
I mean, because yeah, it's 12, not there. The twelve-year-old jammed a wrench into her neck, and the wrench, uh, like the I don't know, socket on, wrench or socket something. wrench. The the socket is on the floor in the photos, and it's covered in blood. Yeah, and she looks fine. Her neck is completely fine. Yeah, so it's kind of weird. So I'm <clears throat> now it's even more suspicious to me. Yeah, and then you know, plus the way the family was talking, and like in the first reported, you know, when it sort of came out in the news, she was in it to kill us. Hey, that was her Almighty. To kill us, she attacked us, and I held her down and just kept punching her and punching her as hard as I possibly could. And, and they're saying that their home looked like a war zone. There was like blood on the carpet, socket he, wrench on the floor, bullet holes in the wall. One of the windows has a bullet hole in it. <laughs> like when he ran out of bullets, the guy's name is Lewis, the dad. Yeah. Lewis began throwing furniture at her. Right? His wife and children eventually jumped in and tried to stop the woman. But the intruder didn't stop until one of the children, Lewis's 12-year-old son, Logan, shoved a wrench in her neck. And the photo is, the wrench thing has blood all over it. Yeah. My thing is, again, there's no neck injury that you can see on this woman. Yeah. And she is, what, 100, 110 pounds, maybe? That's what she looks in the picture. I mean, they don't really say what her and weight is, but, I mean, she, does, she doesn't look like. Which I guess, you know, hey, if you're... If you're the devil, you know, maybe you just got that strength, that, in, that inner strength. <laughs> but the family looks fat, well healthy. fed, and healthy. Yeah. I was going to say. Well, I mean, I don't mean like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's obvious that they're not missing food too much. Yeah. I mean, it, they look well rounded. <laughs> they're well rounded. They no, get they're, they're their not large. Daily- they just look like regular people. It's, it's not yeah. like, you know, they're out on the streets or anything. But this person who basically beat them all up is is really small in stature. It's just kind of a strange thing. Yeah. So I don't. So I bet she was like, when she hit the jail, and like, what are you in for? And she's like, I'm the devil, and I just beat up a whole family. <laughs> and they're like, what? You know, it was crazy, man. It was a crazy title. Yeah, get in here with the other devil. Yeah, like, welcome. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Crazy title. It was super clickbait. Um, you know, most of it's true. They never really mentioned the black eyes again after the headline kind of a thing in the first original article, but yeah, it hit the news. I mean, it was kind of like, what the heck, man? But see, the, it was the black eyed stuff that, and the devil woman and the witch. And, the, and you know, it was kind of like, what? Because if you throw a so, headline out there. That, and it was 4th of July weekend. Yeah. That makes me think of black eyed kids. Yeah. I'm going to click on it. Heck yeah. I am. I clicked it. And plus. We've had some reports in the past of black-eyed kids showing up at the doorstep of people's homes near holidays in yeah. general. Not necessarily, you know, like Christmas, but hey, 4th of July, that's a holiday. Yeah. You know? So I was like, yeah. I'm the devil. Like, no. What? But, you know, they didn't, and see, and here's the thing, too. We, we wanted more information, like, is she looks kind of sad in this mugshot picture. Yeah. Like, what's her story, man? Like, did she have a chance to say anything? You know, was she like, I don't know what happened. I want, you know, one minute I'm at my house, the next minute I'm, you know, being, I'm beating up a family. Like, what's her deal, man? Yeah. What was it? What was, what was the cause of this? I mean, if there was like no drugs found or whatever, maybe she was temporary, temporarily possessed. Who knows? Oh. Uh-huh. Maybe she's on some super drug. I mean, I'm just kind of curious as to what happens, but it, it seems like, after about eight days and this secondary update article came out, that's the end of it. Yeah, we I actually regularly check because I was kind of looking for stuff. Yeah. Um, and there hasn't been anything new other than references to possibly a gateway of super drugs being involved, I guess is what they were trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't even, I mean, they really can't, I mean, but just like there's no explanation for it. Yeah. Because as soon as we've seen this and started talking about it, I immediately went and set up a um, Google alert Yeah, for Naked Devil, just in case <laughs> it happened again. And what kind of results did you get? I didn't get anything that was related to this. <laughs> yeah. But no, but I mean, the point was, is that if there were more attacks like this, then, you know, it could be something. You're like, oh, wait a minute. This you know, happened in Virginia, and then one happened somewhere else, and then this maybe happened over here. You Just to kind of see if there was some kind of weird possession event thing going on <laughs> because what, what happens is people they they you hear a crazy news article and like oh that's neat but you gotta like follow it through and see if there's any more you know what i mean yeah but i couldn't find any 
No. Yep. Weird thing. Because, I mean, that would be unusual if you're like, if you have an attack like this in Virginia, and then all of a sudden, like, say in New Mexico, there was another attack like this, and then say in Colorado, and, and me yeah. having the same sort of uh, descriptors, that would be, you know, highly unlikely for it to just, you know what I'm saying? It would be like, what? And now any reference of it, uh, it's of gone. this. Funny, I found two, and one is, I should probably click away because it seems to be a very funny, far-reaching conspiracy religious website. So I'm just going to close this. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't look healthy. And then another one that just just threw me some weird errors, and it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know. But, but we did check the quick, the, uh, uh, I was going to say Kickstarter, but it's not. We did click the GoFundMe and look at it, and at last check, they only made like 500 of their, like, total which i think was like five thousand yeah. bucks oh yeah and then you know there were some like people making comments and saying stuff and i guess the dad was trying to answer some of the comments and he grabbed his wife's phone and was answering and they're like you know i thought the man my shoot you know, it's just like they just tore him apart and then they eventually <laughs> just sort of like quit posting altogether so but imagine they should have been honest man yeah. i would have been like it's crazy that he jumped in the house i didn't want to kill her in front of my kids um, you know, the house has been destroyed. I got a $5,000 insurance deductible. I don't have any money because I just bought a house and I'm cash poor. Can you help me? Yeah. And I would have threw them five bucks or something. Yeah. But it didn't come across that way. It's like they wrote a little thing and they put it up there. Now, that being said, you know, if they were professional scammers, I would think, or if they had the intention to scam, they would do a better job yeah. at selling it. But they didn't. And it's probably because it's, you know, they probably haven't ever done one of those before. You know, they, they don't, maybe they're not necessarily like internet savvy people or whatever, but, you know, I don't know. Hmm. I was trying to, again, <clears throat> see if there were any updates on. She had the strength of four grown men. <laughs> not like half grown men. She was not stopping. Yeah. She charged me with superhuman strength. I mean, it's something. <laughs> Dude, it's like I was throwing furniture at her. It's like, you know, the only weird thing is, uh, about a year ago or from, you know, July, Mm -hmm. May 18th, 2018, a erratic man with the same name as this woman, Ryan Doss of Danville, Virginia, um, broke into a house in North Carolina. Yeah. That's about it. And yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> i even looked to see because yeah. there was like some zombie reports and stuff to yeah. try to see if they were related and oh damage to personal property a violation of a domestic violence protection order see? all right you might as well just stop right there yeah. this is ongoing thing i mean this is like out of the blue this yeah. crazy naked lady they don't even know anybody in this neighborhood it was their first night the stranger just shows up in their house which all naked and says i'm the devil i had been like well and then the article never said, you know, well, what did that used to be her house? Was she familiar with area? Nothing. Why was she naked? Why did yeah. she say she was the devil? I mean, there's obviously more to it. Yeah. But why have they not come out and said, yeah, this chick was high on drugs and, you know, bath salts. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. yeah. They haven't said, and that's the thing, they haven't said anything like that. And, you, you know, and, and see, that kind of thing happens. And, yes, it makes the news. But, you know, if it was something like drugs or whatever, you think they would have said something by now. Yeah. Under the suspicion of or something like that. But they haven't said it. And that's what makes it even worse. So if the cops aren't saying it, what if she really was possessed? What if she really was the embodiment of the devil at that time? But what we're doing right now is we're breaking down the failure of accurate journalism on on this. Or the failure of just lack of information. Well, yeah, because whoever reported this story or documented this whole situation has not given pertinent facts that people would want to know well, and that failure in journalism. Well, we don't is, know that now, we're making the assumption it's a failure and failure, failure in journalism because journalists have a tendency to kind of really suck these days. But what if that's all the information but, they had? I mean, they should have asked. I mean, those are some questions there. Well, I mean, that's and, just it though. It, it doesn't, there's not even person. There's not even a, an individual individual Okay. individual attributed to the writing of this article. It's W R I C. Okay. What I'm, 
trying you know what I mean? to basically say is the the lack the the faults or failures in this article and this news reporting kind of lend themselves to things we've noticed in the past like we had that very long conversation with Mr. Gorman about just the random news articles yeah and how that information was fed to the public did that help create or stir up the imagination of the local residents. Oh, of course. So, with, I mean, that's what I was trying to yeah. say, though. I mean, if you look at it, who, like, who wrote the articles, WRIC, there's yeah. no name attached to who wrote the article. So, will this blue-haired devil lady turn into a legend in Chesterfield? Well, or, possibly. Or, you know, over time? Or is it just going to get buried until somehow some half-baked version of it exists as urban folklore. Or maybe they're just trying to hide the whole thing. Maybe she really is possessed by the devil. Maybe everybody knows this kind of thing. And then this, you know, maybe she really was at the time of black eyed, you know, maybe they're just <laughs> not saying because they don't want to make it. I mean, something like this, you're going to have to say something because I mean, in a small town, small sort of, you know, not necessarily large metropolitan area, that kind of thing is going to get out. Yeah. So you put a little bit of information out there and you just leave it alone. And it's not even, it's not even, you know, misinformation. It's not even a diversionary tactic. It's like you put a, just a little bit of the truth out there and you just let it sit. Yeah. And that's, that's part of it for and, me. But I mean, we don't know. That's the whole point. Because hmm. most people are like, man, that was crazy. And they're just moving on to the next thing. No, I, I would want to know so. more. <laughs> well, if, yeah, but I mean, that's, that's the whole point though. Hmm. You know, what better way to, uh. Get ahead of something and to put it out there first, right? I mean, is that woman like some like some people do that when they're like going to have like their phone their phone has been hacked, and then they get threatened with like we're going to release all the terrible crap on your phone, and then you know they just say, oh, well, I got to show you, I'll just do it ahead of time, I'll just put it all out there, and then you know <laughs> what are you going to get from me now? Nothing, you know that kind of thing. I don't know. I mean the the deficits in information in these articles, as well as the the over. I don't know the over the really big stuff and the clickbaity stuff just leave too much. I don't know. They just there's too many details. Well, I think, I think that's on purpose though, because I mean it's just super clickbait, but, I and mean, then most and clickbait articles don't have anything really to do with what the title says, and just not enough information. Even if it's not drugs or the supernatural, I mean the very real fact of is this woman back out in the community? You know that. Yeah. Those are some details I'd like to know. Because, I mean, if you, if you, do, if you yeah. do a Google search for devil woman attacks, you get things like some of the, the article titles were like, yeah. naked woman claiming to be the devil invades the home. Yeah. Or invades home. She looked possessed. You know, Virginia family attacked by naked, whatever. I'm just going to assume devil. Mm -hmm. Naked devil woman attacks family. Devil. <laughs> That's just one of them. <laughs> right. Chesterfield family fends off naked intruder who claimed to be the devil. Naked devil woman attacks Virginia and their Virginia family in their new home. Yeah. Um, devil woman attacks family and Virginia dad fires 39 shots at naked devil. Right. Yeah. Devil woman attacks family. And how exactly was she the devil besides like she the said verbal, it. besides the verbal? What more do you need? Omi? Mm. if I throw a couch at you and you keep coming after you've told me you're the devil, I'm probably going to believe you. I need. I, I shot at you thirty nine times. Warning shots. I mean, maybe maybe that's part of it. You know, a hot topic receipt. I don't know. I mean, I, what is that going to do? She looks scary. Look, unless a hot no no unless a hot topic receipt is as long as a CVS receipt, we can use like a bull whip. It ain't going to work. So, yeah, that devil woman attacks family is from Wisconsin Morning News O M N Y dot F N hmm. Omni. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. Yeah. So, and then the, one of them was like possessed woman breaks in the home, but there's really no other real articles about this sort of thing at all, but it made the news because it was a big deal because of the crazy clickbait title. And his story is kind of crazy, Yeah. you know, but here's what I thought was kind of funny though. One of the things that I read, they told the police that a naked woman wearing a blue ponytail broke in and attacked the family. How do you, I mean, wearing a blue ponytail? Don't you, don't you have a blue tail? Yeah, you should mm -hmm. have a blue ponytail. Is it, is it like a clip-on, clip kind of a man bun yeah, thing? Yeah, uh, did she have extensions? 
And plus, See, now we're just reading into well, it. Yeah, because the well, I read into it the first time the article came out because yeah. they didn't have a photo of her. So I literally imagined a full on black eyed kids demon yeah. type thing. No, you know, this, she looks like she's maybe five six, weighs a hundred pounds. Yeah, with with a blue ponytail and an Aladdin top. shirt. Yeah, a, a Jasmine, <laughs> Jasmine, a Jasmine Disney princess shirt. Yeah. She, has, she kind of has that weird look like, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. <laughs> like, you know, hey, what's up, man? It's cool. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Kind of nutty. The family didn't help themselves by th- immediately going and trying to do a GoFundMe. And then the whole fact that the whole issue seems to be dead. There's no more story. But you know what this reminds me of? We talked about this in the past, too. And we probably should have added this story to this particular story just as because it's so weird yeah that boy that little toddler who was lost this is in north carolina yeah was lost and basically was saved by a bear remember the bear kept him alive yeah and then you hear it was on the news for a couple of days and it's like it just went away and it's like it was done people yeah. were like that's you know that's no bear that's sasquatch you know because the kid was like because they just said, you know, oh, the boy had been found and survived. He'd been out in the woods for like 48 hours and it was wet and rainy and cold. And the bear And, and you know, they asked the boy, they asked the boy something and he was like, yeah, I mean, the bear took care of me. And then it's like the parents are like, well, no, no, and then gotta yeah. go, right? And that was the end of it. Which is, we know it ain't no bear. That was Sasquatch. And bears are nocturnal. There's just so many things yeah, about that bears story. Bears eat stuff. I mean, who's? I mean, they probably, maybe they wouldn't eat the kid. Maybe, yeah. Who knows what a bear is going to do? But at the same time, a bear is not known necessarily to take care of a toddler. Or guide a toddler to a safer location yeah, or anything. Yeah, yeah. It was weird. And, what's, and he didn't even look that dirty when they found him. Yeah. So that's made, Bigfoot. What made me mad, though, was, like, I think we were one of the first podcasts to talk about that one because it was pretty much in our neck of the woods. I mean, the, our, the news yeah. went out and we talked about it. Like Literally. seriously, two hours later, because <laughs> as soon as I seen it, and we were we were because we were doing a podcast anyway. As soon People as I seen are, it, I'm like, oh yeah, we got this is right down the road, man. And it's funny because like literally three or four days ago, people are sharing it like it's brand new news. Yeah, it's like, and nah. I'm like, mm, no, we remember because we also what happened that time that. around that time, not necessarily in the same area, but pretty close, relatively close in the grand scheme of things, was that nice old teacher lady that was basically attacked and mauled to death by something. And they were like, it could be wolves. They don't know what it is exactly. Yeah. It could be they were trying to say, dogs. Well, they were trying to say neighborhood dogs and they were trying to say wolves and they just turned it to predatory animal and they've tested all the dogs in the neighborhood. They tested for DNA to match like wolves and canines and it doesn't match either. So what actually killed this older, nice lady? And the answer is dog man. Well, that's what but- we said. It's like, you know, it almost <laughs> sounds like a dog man to kind of yeah. attack. Right. And then all of a sudden, I see on Facebook or somewhere, like, what, five months later, somebody's like, we think Dogman may have attacked her. I'm like, well, I think I just said that. Yeah. I think I said, actually, I think Greg said that four months ago. (laughs) Yeah, because, I mean, it didn't make sense. The dogs were afraid. It was funny. It wasn't funny. The dogs were afraid. They didn't even want to be in the area. And what scared them away was, like, a jogger or something. Anyway, Ascent this woman was being jogger. drug off into the woods, and they said being drugged by her neck. It was it was awful. Oh gosh! And she was an older lady. I think she was seventy eight. Anyway, and it's like what? And she was she was a teacher. Yeah. yeah, she was really. I mean, really, she was loved in the community and everything. And she's like, it was a horrific thing. And then the um, update six months later was is that they still had no idea what did it. And see, I'm. I this was, is 2019. Yeah. How can they still not have any idea from all the DNA testing and everything that they've done? There's a wildlife research so, center right there. And they basically tested everything yeah. and said, no, nothing in this area is capable of doing this and nothing did it. No. Nothing local. They tested all the dogs yeah. and because they came across, they said, we, yeah, it was a thing. They had, because they had the, that, those two local dogs who kept getting loose or whatever. It was, it wasn't them. Yeah. Um, and I was trying to be very much a skeptic during that whole episode because some of the behavior and how they described what happened to her. I'm sitting there like, mountain lion? But it's not in a mountain lion region at all. Yeah, no. It's like coastal area, (laughs) almost. Well, what we actually did is when we looked at that, we looked at the area and we looked at Bigfoot sightings from what we could find because nobody really tracks dogman sightings that that way. Yeah. And it was like... 
in that area, there have been dogman sightings that run in that particular area all the way down into South Carolina to a place where there are lots of Bigfoot slash dogman sightings. Mm-hmm. So, and if you kind of blew the map up and looked, it's like, okay, this could be a transit route. I mean, it would be easy to transit that area all the way down into South Carolina in relative obscurity. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a thing. We talked about it. The update didn't make any sense. Yeah. Oh, that update was like in August or September. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because the the naked lady devil woman attack thing happened July 4th. Uh, the arrest and the mugshot showed up July 12th. And then the teacher update was in August. Right. The Nessie update that the Nessie may be a giant eel also came out in August. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a weird time, man. Yeah. August was kind of weird. And we were doing all, we were doing, um, events and stuff too. So, (laughs) yeah. And, you know, if you want to look at that teacher attack, it's, if you Google North Carolina teacher or NC teacher attacked on trail, you know. You can kind of come up with it. So they ruled out coyotes, wolves, and wild dogs, as well as loose dogs in the neighborhood. The only thing the DNA evidence has concluded was that the attacker was canine in nature. Exactly. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Um, now, there's a concern now in the community because that attack was from unknown sources that could happen again. That's yep. very ominous. And then, like I was saying. Oh, and on top of all that. Yeah. We had been talking about aggressive canine or aggressive upright canine slash dogman encounters up north. Yeah. Like in Pennsylvania, you know, up in there. And so if the, you know, so because it kind of like all made sense. And so that's when I was like, this sounds like a dogman attack, mm-hmm. which would be the first that I've ever actually heard of. Like a, you know, for real dogman attack kind of a thing. So I was like, yeah. what? And I mean, then- it's purely speculation, but. And then what I like in this update is uh, my theory when this first came out. Well, kind of my theory. This woman, she's like, I think it was a black panther. Because remember, yeah, that's we possible. don't have panthers in North Carolina. But even, and technically black panthers are cryptids because yes. there's no, yeah. But if even Department of Transportation has a v- footage of a panther by the side of the highway. Yeah. We got Panthers, so. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, they say canine. And the, the yeah. claws are different, obviously. Dog That's... claws don't do the same kind of damage that a large cat claws do, for sure. I mean, dogs have, yeah. they don't have the same claws, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. It was a crazy thing. So anyway, that's what made the top nine paranormal news and events of 2019 number seven was the naked devil woman attacks family. Now, the sad state of what happened to this lovely North Carolina lady teacher didn't really make huge news necessarily. It didn't make the list because it wasn't, not that it's not important, but I mean, it just didn't have the same sort of crazy sort of thing because when we started looking for the events to make sure that we were looking at the top, it it never even showed up. Yeah. So, but we went ahead and kind of put it in there because we can do whatever we want because this is our podcast and it made sense. Because it's also just now starting to get traction, which kind of bugs me. It's just, it's coming back again, probably because after another six months or whatever it is, because they they came out with an an update six months later and didn't really have any real information. Maybe they just needed to, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it was me. And I lived in that neighborhood or whatever. I would make sure. Let's just keep refreshing this every once in a while. Let's not let this go away. Yeah. So, I mean, it might be interesting to see what the locals think. Um, but, yes, it's kind of a strange area. But it kind of is what it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and with that being said. So, that's, that was a runner-up. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Okay. Kind of crazy. But, anyway, I think at this point. Uh, our 30 minute podcast is now 45 minutes long and I think it's time for us to go ahead and wrap it up. All right. So anyway, there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. But, uh, otherwise, you know, that's about all I got. Yep. Thanks for listening. Uh, be sure to like and follow us on Facebook. 
Uh, that's the best way to find out when we come out with new episodes besides subscribing to the podcast, which we always appreciate. Yes. So anyway, I hope you enjoy yourselves. Yeah. Whenever you listen to this, hope you're having a good day or night. Whatever the case may be, whatever it is you know, up with you. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up? Anyway, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Top nine paranormal news and events 2019. Number seven, naked devil and attacks family. Crazy. Yep. Okay, see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye.